everyone, welcome to another episode of HGC TV. I'm Joe Holscher, and today we're excited to have with us a special guest, Blanca Salazar, um, who will be joining our conversation on LGBTQ plus issues and concerns in family law. Um, as many of you know, June is Pride Month, which is important to remember and acknowledge that gay rights began in part with black members of the LGBTQ community leading that charge. So the current movement for equal rights um, and protection is something that we aim to provide for every client at our firm and we're proud to remember all of that history. Uh, we stand on the shoulder of giants. So before we start this discussion, please like and subscribe uh, so that you can get future updates for our videos on HGC TV. We have exciting things in the pipeline and we don't want you all to miss out. Thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. It's really great to have you here. Thank you uh, for having me. I'm very excited to be here. These are a lot of questions that were always, uh, my wife and I have always talked about and wondered, you know, what the correct answer is or what we should do, what legal actions we should take going forward. So thank you for having me. Oh, it's great. Uh, you know, uh, there's been a lot of change in this area. So I know that these are com common questions for a lot of our clients who come in. And uh, I hope that we can give you some good answers. So if you wouldn't mind, Blanca, can you tell us a little bit about your family? Okay. so. Uh, my wife and I have been married for actually in, in August it will be five years and um, I'm happy to say five years because <laughs> if you've known, uh, if you know us, you know, we, uh, we have a lot of fun and everything, but we can also uh, sometimes irritate each other a little bit, <laughs> as well, many couples are, could probably say. Yeah, y'all are well past the honeymoon period <laughs> yeah, at this point. Definitely. So uh, congratulations. A little premature, but you're almost there Yeah. For five years. Thank you. And um, we have a little girl. She's three years old. And of course, I mean, we love her and, you know, all of our focus is always on her and, and always, um, you know, uh, worrying about her future and things like that. So those are the kind of questions that I have for you today. So uh, I, I have three kids. We had uh, two seven-year-old twins and an eight-year-old daughter. We wanted two close together. <laughs> um, you know, for us that was easier than for a lot of same-sex couples who are just experiencing the ability to adopt as a couple. In your family, did you guys go through an adoption or like, how did you get your daughter? So we, we were lucky and we have a friend who was able to help us out and so he is the donor and we did insemination. Did you guys go through formal assisted reproduction, like surrogacy with a doctor and all of that or was it something informal? It was informal. Uh, we, you know, we looked into everything, um, and based on insurance and costs and everything, we figured, you know, let's let's try to see uh, to do something on our own and see if we can uh, be able to achieve something. I mean, it is a miracle, of course. Um, even if you go to the doctor or not, but I mean, just the the cost alone, you know, kind of made a shift the other direction. Family Code provides for a formal process, but it requires a lot of paperwork and it's very expensive and it tends not to be covered by insurance so you y'all aren't alone at all um so what steps have you guys taken if any to establish parentage for your daughter before we even did anything you know um we the three of us uh, my wife myself and um, our donor sat down talked about everything, what our feelings were about, you know, the future, if, if everything was to come to fruition from this. And, um, you know, we did have something that was notarized, so, sort of like a contract, but it's nothing that we put, you know, no attorney involved or anything like that. Um, so that's the, way, the route we took. Who's on your daughter's birth certificate? My wife and I are both listed as the mothers on the birth certificate. And, uh, did you guys use a hospital? Yes, we did at the, um, uh, Chris Santa Rosa Hospital. At, at first, when when they came with the form, it did say mother and father, mm -hmm. and so we asked if we can get that changed. And you know, luckily they they didn't you know uh, fight with us or anything like that. They went rectified the form, and then we were able to to proceed. Not all hospitals will do that, mm -hmm. so I think that that's useful for a lot of our viewers to know that that's a hospital where, with some outreach on on the client's part, they will be friendly. Um, because we've run into this problem where we can't get both parents' names on the birth certificate from the hospital. Um, so I'm glad to hear that that worked out for you guys. What kind of questions do y'all have? 
So with that in mind, since we both um, are listed as mothers on the birth certificate, my question is, um, do I still have to adopt her legally? So unfortunately, um, in Texas law, if, if a parent's name is on the birth certificate, that establishes them presumptively as the parent. But our statutes are all gendered. So there's a legal question out there. And you know, when it comes to family, you don't necessarily want to be the test case. Um, you just want to make sure that your family is taken care of. So we would probably recommend that you do a formal adoption or um, there's kind of an intermediate step that you might try first, which is just to go get a legal adjudication of parentage. Um, there's a couple ways to do that. Um, a lot of people will try to do it informally by going through the attorney general's office. That can come with repercussions, particularly for couples who are not formally married because the AG may attempt to establish a child support order, mm -hmm. which you don't necessarily <laughs> want or need, right? Um, but you can get a legal adjudication of parentage and it's easier than an adoption. Um, and that's basically where you go into court and you ask a judge to recognize that both of you are presumed parents and make you legally parents in Texas. However, just like some hospitals aren't friendly, some courts aren't friendly, particularly in some of the smaller counties. So in that situation, it may be worth pursuing an adoption and even looking at changing your residence long enough to qualify in a different jurisdiction. Um, it's not a fair challenge, but you know, it'll be faster than trying to change the law. However, um, for parents who are brave enough and have the resources and want to challenge the law to get gender neutral language, to get um, law that is, I think, fair and correct, uh, I know there are a lot of lawyers throughout Texas who are interested in that, including us. We would like to be part of that effort. In dealing, have you had any trouble dealing with third parties yet? We've been lucky in that sense. I mean, when we first uh, walk into a room, the three of us together, they always assume we're related, you know, sister or something like that. But once we explain the situation, we've never encountered any um, uh, discrimination or anything like that or any third party issues or anything like that. What other questions do you have or do you think uh, people in the community would have? Um, as my situation stands, um, if my wife and I were to split up uh, or divorce or anything like that, would I still have legal custody or legal rights uh, for my daughter? Yes, you should, right? Um, for the most part, and, and well, let me ask you this. We all legally married at the time your daughter was born. Yes, we were. Because of the Obergefell decision, gay marriage is legal. And Texas law presumes that people who are in a marital relationship are both the parents of a child who's born during that marital relationship. Uh, in fact, in divorces, if somebody becomes pregnant, we have to put everything on hold until the child is born. Oh. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but you shouldn't have any issues. It, in fact, a custody battle should look just like any other custody battle. So I can't tell you if you'll have equal rights, and that's why I hesitated. Um, the whole realm of possibility in a custody battle is open in same-sex custody battles. That is, if somebody's not a fit parent, I'm not saying you guys, right? Um, they might not have full custody. They might get something called possessory conservatorship where they're allowed to have visitation, but not really a lot of decision-making power. Um, all the way to termination of parental rights if somebody's just a dangerous parent. But, but the default would be joint managing conservatorship. So both of you would share decision-making authority and in most cases, the debate is over who's the primary custodian, uh, which is slang for what lawyers, for the real legal concept, which is who gets to designate the primary residence, right? Um, a lot of times we don't have somebody designated primary. That's usually when there's a 50-50 split. But who, the person who has that right, when they have it, uh, actually has a fair amount of control because they get to pick not just the residence, but that ends up being the school district, often the school. Um, it ends up being doctors in a lot of cases because of the health insurance and things like that. So it really just kind of depends on what the, um, the, the legal standard, which is best interest of the child, and a series of factors called the Holly factors, which are almost all encompassing. So who can provide economically, who can provide uh, for the moral and religious training of the child, 
you know, basically just who's the stronger parent um, for that kid. But the important thing to remember in any divorce or custody battle is you can agree on almost anything. So the family code has like defaults, but if people are willing to co-parent and get along, then they can work out an arrangement that works for their family specifically. So basically, custody battles are custody battles, regardless of who's involved. If my wife and I were in a fatal accident, would um, our donor have the right to fight for custody? If you haven't done a legal adjudication of parentage or an adoption, then probably yes. Because under Texas law, until you do that and you get those kind of court orders, um, technically he's on the hook potentially for child support, but also that would potentially give him access to the child. Um, it's one of the reasons we like to clarify those types of things, and then instead of worrying about whether or not he has the right, you would fix that through estate planning, which again is just, just the same for, for basically every family, um, where you can do a designation of guardianship before need arises and give some guidance to the courts for who you would like to be a guardian. Um, and there's other documents that, that we can prepare to help couples in case that happens. Um, and that's a great example that you use too, Blanco, because that's what I tell people who come in for estate planning. Um, you've got to assume like a really bad car accident where everybody gets wiped out. And plan for the worst, hope for the best. On a similar topic, um, if I select my wife as uh, the power of attorney, who does that protect and does it protect us as a couple? So there's two different kinds of powers of attorney that are really important. Uh, one is a durable power of attorney and the other is a medical power of attorney. Um, for same-sex couples, we recommend that you do both because again, we have problems still lingering with some hospitals where they're not gonna recognize somebody as a medical consenter. That's mostly been solved with Obergefell. Um, but every once in a while you run into problems. So we actually even suggest that for married couples as well. A medical power of attorney gives somebody the ability to make medical decisions for an incapacitated person. A durable power of attorney deals more with like property rights, paying bills, can they sell property on your behalf. Um, but powers of attorney don't really give protection, they give authority. So when you give somebody a POA, now they have the power to make decisions for you um, and not necessarily with your consent, although you can supersede a power of attorney or revoke it. And you can also limit how far it goes, but um, the only reason we recommend powers of attorney is as an emergency measure in case something happens when there's not proper estate planning done. <clears throat> you gotta trust the person you give a POA to, is what <laughs> I'm saying. So um, for the future, if we decide to have another child with the same donor, um, do you recommend um, any documentation to keep full custody? And my legal advice has to be, yes, you should go through all of the formalities of assisted reproduction in the Texas Family Code, which means that you would need to talk to a doctor, um, get them on board to assist uh, with the artificial reproduction, um, and develop appropriate paperwork, including a contract between uh, yourselves and the donor. It's the only way to get full legal protection at this time. Uh, but as we've been talking about in the real world, there are workarounds and they can be just as effective, but you need to be aware that you're not following the laws that exist in Texas right now, which was not designed with this in mind. And in fact, that statute is gendered too. So, you know, there's even questions about whether or not we can use it in a same sex context. I think that's unconstitutional but if you take it at face value, there would be problems. So, um, like your family, lots of people do use workarounds. We just wanna get them done as fast as possible. Um, it is good to involve a lawyer in that process because we can make sure that there's good paperwork ready to go. Um, but again, because we have to follow the law as lawyers, we've taken that oath. Our legal advice has to be, you should follow the law. If you choose not to, you know, we can look at options though. Blanca, thank you very much. I think that was a good conversation. Um, if anybody on the internet has questions for us, we'd be happy to follow up and answer those. Um, I'd like to thank Blanca again for joining us today. 
Um, we value you and your family, and you need to know that the team at HGC is always willing to support the community in any way that we can. Um, the law there is cutting edge, but the good news is that society is changing and we are now on the right side of history. So if you have any personal questions on family laws or any of our viewers have questions on family laws and rights in Texas, feel free to drop them in the comments below or if that's a little too public, go ahead and contact us directly. Um, that wraps up our video for today and as we head out, remember to hit the bell button so you can be notified when we release a new video. Thanks, y'all.